going on, everybody? It's your boy, Jay Easy, a.k.a. Fresh from the Barbershop, BK the People's Champ, coming to you live with another video, man. Another basketball update, man. We're going to keep the energy flowing. We're going to keep everything going. We're going to keep it rolling. Money on the flow like my dog, T. Grizz. Let's say that. get straight to it. Report, Luke Mabamute agrees to a one-year deal to return to the L.A. Clippers, man. And this is just going to set up everything. We're going to go in order everything, setting up everything today. At least I'm trying to. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. Um... So, straight up and down, deal is worth $4.3 million for a one-year deal. Uh, he left the Houston Rockets, and uh, we, I mean, I guess the Rockets didn't want to sign him back. Maybe they couldn't sign him back. Maybe they thought they were going to get somebody else. Maybe, maybe it is what it is, or maybe it's, it's what the next story is going to come up uh, next. The, the, out, the, out, the fallout of this thing is this. You don't have a wing defender. You don't have a small forward now if you're the Rockets, right? Uh, you know, Trevor Rees is gone. Luke Mbamute is gone, and now you don't have anything. You're hoping that you get mellow, and uh, that really goes into the next story where we're looking at Jerry, uh, Luke, uh, not Luke, uh, Trevor Reese's new teammate, Jared Dudley, believes that Carmelo Anthony to the Rock has been done for a while. So, I mean, this is just something, this is just hearsay, but it says uh, Dudley was asked, you know, it's just straight up right here, Jared, do you, Jared, you see Melo going to Houston? I do. And, uh, he says that's been done for a while. Now we don't have anything that that really confirms it, but what I did say earlier, the need is there. They have to get somebody. So you got to get a small forward. You might as well get one of the one of the better ones in the league when he actually wants to play, when he actually wants to do something. So you like I said, you lost Mabal Mute, you lost Trevor Reason, so you're gonna lose a whole lot of defense regardless of what happens. But now that they're gone. Uh, like I said, the report says they're going to try to recruit him harder and harder. And that must be the reason we got the report yesterday that Chris Paul reached out. And uh, he just said, look, we got to get this guy in here. If we don't get him in here, you know we're going to lose him for nothing. And uh, thus, it's, it's going to be a bad situation. Not losing for nothing, but we're not going to have a small forward. And, you know, you would rather try to make it work with something, you know, somebody that, that may not fit as well, but he's supremely talented. Uh, you, you try to do that more than you want to try to go with the unknown. So you're like, it's the devil that you know versus the devil that you don't know. You might as well go with Melo because he's the devil that you know. He's the guy that you know. You know what you're going to get out of him. You know how to motivate him. Maybe they feel like they can motivate him and they can get him as part of the game and, and you know, really, really have him fit into it. Um, like I said, watching Russell Westbrook play basketball is something that people probably didn't want to do. Probably didn't want to watch LeBron play basketball either. So if you come here, you're probably going to still be watching Chris Paul and and um and 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 James Harden play basketball. You'll be watching basketball wherever you go in, in one of these three situations. You might as well go to the one that probably has the best chance right now of beating the Golden State Warriors. And the only reason I'm saying that is because they, they took them to seven games. So I mean, you know, a lot of people argue that if Chris Paul didn't get hurt, they win that series. But he did get hurt. And uh, if ifs and buts was candy and nuts every day, it'd be Christmas. So we can't go by that. The only thing we can go by, you can't go by what if. You got to go by what is. And uh, Chris Paul did get hurt. And they I mean, he did get hurt every season. Chris Paul got hurt just like he does every season. And, and I mean, you know, you lost. Maybe if they had had Melo, they would have won. But, I mean... Melo don't really play defense, but he would have given you that offensive punch. I don't know. You guys let me know down in the comments. Do you think if they had had Melo this year with Chris Paul going down, do you think they would have won that game? Do you think that he would have given them the punch that they needed to uh, to win that series? I don't know. Hey, on to the next story. Story, I'm sorry. Kawhi Leonard could draw more attention by releasing the workout video. Now, this is more or less just saying that in the age of social media where you got everybody and the mom putting out the mixtape and all of that good stuff, maybe Kawhi could up his stock, you know, and make some people want to trade for him more. If they, if he goes ahead and, and, and drops a workout video and says teams are going around every way to find out find out where he's training, what he's doing, say a one Eastern Conference general manager who, who counts himself among the interested. So, I mean, that's a, there's so much we don't know. It seems like every everyone every one player is putting out a video on social media of them working out. Said uh, G, uh, Eastern Conference GM, if Kawhi did one, he'd instantly get 35,000 hits, and half of and half of them would be uh, NBA GMs. How is that? It ain't 35,000 NBA GMs. What do you mean, bruh? 
I guess what he's saying is they'd be watching it over and over. He, he obviously doesn't know how YouTube works. When you watch it one time, it logs your IP, and you can't keep watching it over and over. That's why my videos only get less than a thousand views and not the views that they deserve because I be watching them over and over. I feel like I got the best content on YouTube. Anyway, um, how can you make a deal or, or even offer without knowing if he can play? He's got to be seen. If he came out and played played in the preseason and looked good, you definitely be, you definitely see teams trying harder to get him. More or less, what they're saying is, I mean, this is something like kind of like what Javale McGee did last year when he released his little workout video or whatever. And uh, more or less, he was just saying, hey, you know, I can shoot threes now. Now that ultimately didn't work out the way that everybody thought it was. But hey, he was out there shooting threes. He took a couple this season. He still shot an abysmal percentage, but hey, it is what it is. Um, I do I do feel like if Kawhi came out and, and put out a workout video, he wouldn't hurt his stock, but he might hurt where he's able to go. So if he comes out and he looks great, they're not letting him go to LA. You understand what I'm saying? Like, he may not be able to go somewhere where he wants to go. They may be like, oh, yeah, we, we definitely sending him to the East or whatever. Uh, I'm pretty sure the Spurs know what, what he has. But, uh, but you know, or, or in, 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 inverse, in the inverse case, it could be where they, they, they say we will. Well, yeah, we know he can play. But I feel like you already know Kawhi can play a quad injury or, or a hamstring, whatever he did. I think it's the quad injury. That's not something that's normally career in or even career threatening in this day and age. Uh, so I, I really don't see how how he wouldn't be able to bounce back from it. Um, and you know what you're getting in Kawhi Leonard. You're getting the fierce defender, and you're getting somebody that's that's one of the best triple threat players in the game, and one of the better catching better better not best one of the better catching shoot players in the game, but definitely one of the best triple threat players. You already know what you're getting in in, in uh, Kawhi. I, I I could definitely say that the only thing that a workout video would do for him it would just show you that he's ready to play right now. And if he's ready to play right now, that's cool because you may you may pay a little bit more for him if you know that he's ready to play right now. If I were those guys, I would just assume that he is ready to play right now. And, uh, you know, he's ready to go right now and give him the green light. And let's just see what's going on. But, um, like I said, I, I think it's much to do about nothing. Uh, if he does release a workout video, I'll watch it like eight times like I watched all of his defensive videos. But at the same time, I really don't feel like it's going to sway an NBA GM's um, opinion one way or another. If you can get Kawhi Leonard, you get Kawhi Leonard. If you can get him without giving up the whole farm, you get Kawhi Leonard. I think it's a. I think it's as simple as that. So I don't think anybody's waiting on a workout tape. But I mean, it couldn't hurt his stock if he can actually play. But I think this is just something. This is just one of those smoke screens that people say, "Well, we don't even know he can play." So if he puts out, you know, something, then you know, this, this is something that they're probably trying to use so that they can lowball the Spurs, who who don't seem to be budging. But hey, it is what it is. Moving on to the next story, Dante. I can't even say his name, DeVincenzo, whatever, has only $3.75, 71 cents to his name. Now, they pretty much just saying, like, you know, my man hadn't paid, he hadn't cashed his first check yet, and he's just showing you right here, you know, he had 260, 268 in, in his regular account and uh, 103 in his way to save. And if y'all know, that way to save is a son of a gun, good boy. Out of my dang bank account, the been under so much time, because where all my money yet? It's in a way to save. Why is it over there? Because every time you make a transaction, it moves it over the way to save. I need this money in my check and I don't need, you know what I'm saying, I'm, 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 just, I'm just serious. But anyway, like I said, so he just showed his bank account. Like I said, another thing there's much to do about that that we already know. I mean, despite owning a thousand dollar iPhone X, like what are they trying to say right here though? Like I said, he only got he only got three dollars four dollars in his bank account, uh, but he got a thousand dollar iPhone X. So what? Hey, I probably got lint in my bank account and I got a Galaxy S9. It's a good thing they, they hey hey that next a mother lover. Anyway, up <laughs> that ATT next is the truth, but you can get it now and pay for it while you're using it. Hey, I mean anyway, man. But anyway, like I said, in all seriousness. Um, he's gonna make at least two million this year. There's much to do about nothing. I'm pretty sure that's just his regular bank account or one of his old bank accounts. Probably his college bank account or something like that. You understand what I'm saying? Like, like when you when you start getting other money, he probably he probably has already opened up a line of credit with his agent and all that good stuff. Actually, I'm quite sure that's what he's done. Uh, opened up a line of credit with his agent or or whomever you know is giving him money. Maybe his parents already had money. We don't know. But uh, this this may be an old college bank account. We don't even know that money might have been there forever. And uh, if he only got a dollar and three cents 
in his uh, way to save. I'm just gonna tell you right now, he has not been making that many transactions or your boy been doing like me and just moving that money right back. I'm going to McDonald's, yes. And for the last story that we got today, ladies and <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we got LeVar Ball couldn't, <laughs> LeVar, only LeVar Ball could have written this wacky JBA press release uh, about, re <laughs> about LiAngelo playing in the JBA. Now check it out, ladies and gentlemen, LeVar Ball, you already know that he's the CEO of the Big Baller brand, and uh, he runs the JBA more or less. I don't really know if that's his league, and he's like the president of the league or what. Obviously, he's not the person putting up all the money, but he is the face of the league. So so you you definitely have that. Now, LaMelo already plays there, and LiAngelo is about to play. He's about to come in. He's supposed to be coming in this week. But uh, what they were saying is the four press release, quote, press release quotes that let you know that it was written by LaVar. After NBA teams surprisingly passed on LiAngelo, which we already know that's not surprising. We know he wasn't going to get picked up. Um, I'd be surprised if he, even, he didn't even make a summer league team or or even the D League. I mean, I would be surprised. But he may need a couple years. Who knows? Uh, if you thought the first round of the JBA games were exciting, then you have seen nothing yet. I mean, I mean it's been a little bit exciting, man. I think most people just there to look and see, see what Melo going to do, uh, see how tall he's getting. This dude's like 6'6", six, six, man. He ain't even finished going. It's scary. He might be, hey, he might be tough. You know, just imagine if he gets him like 16 or something. The JBA has exceeded expectations. Uh, yeah, that remains to be seen, but we're going to see. We'll see by the end of the season. And after seeing the competitiveness of the JBA and all the talent. And then they say the four least believable quotes clearly written by him. I mean, it's, it's the exact same ones. More or less, the JBA is not a bad thing. Anything that comes in and gets on the NCAA's ass and, 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 and puts them in a spot where they're uncomfortable and they need to, you know, makes them want to pay these players or makes them realize that the way that they're doing these players is, is like literally, it's, it's nearly legalized prostitution. And I don't want to hear anything about, ah, ah, you get a free education. And, okay, you get a free education. So what? My education is almost free. I ain't paying them damn student loans back. Mine was free too. But look, you might... <laughs> <laughs> but look though, you you can't. Okay, you get a free education. You go in, and you're still not guaranteed a job in your field. But the money that most players make for the school dwarfs the amount of money that they will make off their education, even if those players don't go pro. So let's say somebody like Derek Watson from the University of South Carolina, one of the best running backs I've ever seen in my life. He ended up going pro. He played for New England for a little while or whatever. But the amount of tickets that he sold were astronomical because everybody was coming to see Derrick Watson at those games. He even played in a couple of basketball games, and he filled the entire arena. So uh, same thing with uh, when, when when Ronaldo was there. Um, no, no, not Balkman. Um, when when uh, ah, I can't think of his name right now. Um, but they were, his brother was there too. I can't think of his name. Uh, Renat, 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 Rolando Howell. That's what his name. Same thing with Rolando Howell was there at University of South Carolina. Rolando Howell didn't go pro, but the amount of tickets that he sold at the University of South Carolina dwarfed the amount of money that he got paid for that scholarship. Stayed there. I think he stayed there the entire four years. He's probably playing overseas. Now, same thing with Carlos Powell. Carlos Powell is, is he didn't play overseas for the last almost 20 years. And, uh, and you know, people were coming to see him because they wanted to see them in the tournament and all that good stuff. So even if players don't make it to the league, they still sell a gang of tickets and the amount of money, like like even if it's an offensive lineman whose name you don't know. The running back can't do his thing, like Sony Michelle and um and, and and Nick Chubb couldn't do their thing if that no name offensive lineman wasn't there. So anything that gets on the ends, especially with basketball where you know everybody's name and and you know you see their faces. Anything that gets on the NCAA's ass and pushes them to change their policies and stop the legalized prostitution that is the NCAA uh, players associate or whatever you call it, the NCAA union, it ain't even got no union, the NCAA player, whatever, whatever it is, whatever can stop that, 
anything that pushes them to ch make some changes and re-examine themselves, anything competition, I'm all for it. So if the JBA can come in and pay more people and, and get some people to, to not, if you're going to be one and done anyway, where what would you rather do? I'm just going to ask you straight up. If you if you are if you are Kevin Durant coming out of high school and the JBA is there, right? So I'm, we're we're assuming that you're gonna get medical insurance, you're gonna get paid, you or you somebody like Zion, somebody like that. Uh, let's just say Kevin Durant, who's a can't miss, surefire can't miss prospect. Would you go to college and sit there? Or Derek, even Derrick Rose, Derrick Rose would have done it. I'm pretty sure Derrick Rose probably would have done it. They said they act, they act like he didn't go to class anyway. I'm pretty sure he did. I mean, he graduated. He, he, he had he had good grades in Memphis, but hey, they act like he didn't go to class. But the thing is, if you're a player that's like that, why wouldn't you just skip college, go to the JBA, play basketball, get a whole lot of tape on there, get used to leading the team, shit on the competition, make yourself look real good, and then go on to the next level and put some ducats in your pocket and your parents' pocket legally instead of having a, a personal bag man bring it and then getting your school sanctioned later. You understand what I'm saying? So um, I, I don't understand why you wouldn't do it. If it's successful, it, it, you probably won't see anybody coming out this year, but like next year, I believe, I truly believe that if there's a can't miss prospect that that, that comes out of high school and, they, and he's a can't miss or a true one and done, I don't even see why you would go to the, uh, why you would even go to college, go to the JBA, play, and then go on to the league. That's if you can't miss. But the thing is, there are eight teams in the JBA, and there are not that many can't miss prospects. You know, so it's gonna be a mixed bag. I mean, what are they gonna fill out the rosters with? Are they gonna fill out rosters with people that are just trying to get to the league? Maybe you got guys that, maybe you got guys that um that come come back here from overseas and they're trying to get to the MBDL or something like that. And then, you know, maybe they fill out the roster with that. I don't know how they're going to fill out the rosters, but it's going to be interesting to see. But like I said, I'm for anything that gets on the NCAA ass and makes them, you know, check themselves and try to see, okay, what can we do off of these players? Listen, I know I got a scholarship, but I can't eat your good intentions. I can't eat that scholarship, man. And you might be saying, yeah, you can't eat it. You can eat the food. Bro, they don't even let you take food out of the lunchroom. Yeah, it's free, but they, they, they just passed a rule where the kids can take food to their room from the lunchroom and get more meals. Do you understand? You getting up at five, it's like literally like the military when you on college, and, and a lot of people don't understand it because they never play any college sport. But you're getting up at five o'clock every single second of your day. In return for that scholarship, you literally become a 24 hour servant to the school, damn near. So $60,000 a year, you go on call 24 hours a day and they, and they get to control your life you know, or $60,000 in total for four years. So you're talking about $15,000 a, a year, maybe. You're going on, you're going to be on call for four years, 24 hours a day. You're getting up at five o'clock, you're practicing, you go to class, probably, you know, you go to four classes. Let's say you got a class is about one. You got to go to study hall. You got to go meet with your position coach. You got to go meet with the, the, the head coach. You got to go workouts. You got to do everything. And then when you get done, you got to go to sleep. And oh, by the way, they don't want to give you no more food. And on the on the off chance you do get some time off, guess what? I can't even get no shoes because I'm broke. I'm broke, nigga, I'm broke. So you got to look at it like that, man. Like that's pretty much how it is. Every single second of your day nearly is regimented. And you are, you become a 24-hour on-call servant for, for four years, more or less. Anyway, maybe I'm over-dramatizing, but if you ever play any 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 college sport or you played for a college you was on scholarship anything like that confirm what i'm saying down in the comments i gotta get up out of here man hope y'all enjoyed the video until next time it's your boy jay he's a, aka fresh from the barbershop bk the people's champ hello they sixed out this mug it don't even sound right when you put it in those terms right 24 hour a day on call servant more or less for fifteen thousand dollars a year for four years and after your eligibility is up they're not going to allow you First off, if you tra if you don't make it and you're not good enough, they're going to yank your scholarship and put you off the team. You're going back to wherever you were. Scholarships then used to be guaranteed, number two, and this is more important. Um, you know, it it's just crazy that if you don't graduate in four years, they're not going to extend your scholarship. You're done. And a lot of majors, who, who can do something like that and then graduate in four years? 
You tell me. That's the question of the day. Who you think can take on a, a regiment like that and then graduate in four years with any type of degree that's going to be helpful for them in life? You ain't going no computer engineering or you're not going to pre-med or none of that stuff like that. You're probably going to just be business administration and or not even that, man. Because if you go to South Carolina, you go to business administration. That's the most school of business. You're not doing that either. Anyway, I'm gone, man. Basket weaving. Peace.